I'm Anil Kumar. Welcome to my videos. We'll discuss experimental probability in this particular video. Now, experimental probability, uh, we also refer it to empirical probability and relative frequency probability. Now, whenever you're trying to find practically the probability of an event to happen, then we call it experimental probability. It is based on direct observation or experiment. So let me write down it is based on direct observation or experiment. Normally in probability whenever we are doing some experiments we call them random experiments. Now these experiments are referred to as random experiments and there are two important things about these experiments. That is one of them is that every experiment will have more than one outcome, right? More than one outcome. That makes sense. If there is only one outcome, what's the point of doing an experiment, correct? <laughs> Let's say you want to find sum of angles within a triangle. You know for sure it is 180. There is no point doing an experiment there, right? So, so we do an experiment to figure out when we have more than one option. So, so that is important. In our experiments, we'll have, always have more than one outcome. And second part to this outcome is that we are never sure what is going to be the outcome. So, so we are not sure about not sure about outcome at the uh, level of trial. So trial really means uh, when you do an experiment you try something out, right? So for example the experiment is to roll two dice, right? We are not sure what numbers will be there. So that is what it is, right? So so in probability, we'll have experiments and these experiments should have more than one outcome and you should never be sure what is going to come. For example, even if you toss a coin, there are two outcomes, head or tail, and when you toss, you're not sure which side will it land. So that becomes a question for probability, right? So, so these are important things to understand. Now you'll find that experimental probability is normally very different from theoretical or subjective probability. Uh, let us take an example. So the example could be, uh, let us say we started with these dies. We'll take just one to make it very simple. Uh, let's say the we want to find probability. We write, say, probability, and we'll define an event. So event is what we are looking at set of outcomes to be, right? So let the event be when you throw the die, we are looking for prime numbers. So we are looking for prime numbers when you roll a die, right? So this is the experiment for us. Now, uh, we clearly know that on a die, there are six numbers, correct? So let's roll. We get two. Okay. But when you are doing experiment, we have to make a tally chart, right? So we have to make a tally chart and every time you get a number, you have to write down uh, what number you got, right? So let's make a tally chart here. So we'll say, okay, so the possible numbers which you could get are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 or 6. Now if you get 2, then what? We'll write one line here. So one time you did an experiment, you write one here, right? So this is also called a frequency table, right? So, so that is how we get relative frequency probability as one of its name, right? So let's do it again. So let's do it a couple of times. We get four this time. Okay, four. And then, then we get five. Very good. And then, then what? Then we get four again and then what then we get two good so now keep on doing it so 
you know, you have to really roll it properly. Uh, okay, that's fine. We'll throw it different ways. Okay, so so we roll it a couple of times. We are getting with this die, which should be a fair die for us three. Okay, we get one number here also. Anyway, let's do it. So two, so one, two, three, four. It's good practice to cross it out like this. It's easier to count if you do like this. Uh, I'm trying to get all the numbers. I'm not getting six. So, so thought just continue till you get six or give up. I'm not sure, right? So I think I see a six this time. No, it doesn't come like that. Anyway, so we did our best, right? So what we got here is we experimented a couple of times. So in this, prime numbers. What are the prime numbers for us? One is not a prime number, right? Since it has only one factor, prime numbers are number two, three, and five. So these are the prime numbers. So let's count how many twos did we get, right? So what I will do now is just count right here itself. We get five plus one, six prime numbers. Three is a prime number, we get three of them. And uh, five, we get two of them, right? So the prime numbers, let me call them this event as A, and uh, and this is, let's say, A. Okay, so number of times we got A is 6 plus 3, 9 plus 2, 11, right? So we'll call it N A. So that is the favorable number of times we got this. So, so the probability for our event, we are calling this as event A, is favorable number of times, number of times we got prime numbers to a uh, number of times we did the experiments. So the space, right? So, uh, well, let's count that also. So we have, uh, let me do it, uh, okay, in another call. We could do it here also. So we are not talk talking about the space. So we have one here and six here, three there, three again, and two, right? So, so we can add this up. So we have, 7, 10, and 15, right? So that is the total number. So we can get our result using the ratio of these two. So in our experiment, we got 11 times prime number. Uh, did I write this three? Okay. And uh, because uh, there's something wrong in our addition. So it's five, three, and two, that is correct. Now this gives us three, three, one, so 7, 10, and 15. Since we have 3 and 1, 4 there. Yeah, that's okay. So 15 is the total space. Correct. So in our sample space, we had 15 total number of trials. Do you see that? So basically, that is the formula which we normally use. But what you really find here is that the formula used is number of times the activity or event actually happened. So we'll write this normally as number of times event happens or it is success, right? So number of time the event happens to the number of trials to the total number of trials. Okay, so most of the time when you're doing experimental probability you're talking about these terms, not those terms, right? That's kind of a huge difference, okay? So that is important to understand. So in case of a probability, when we are doing it experimentally, we are just checking success versus total, right? So it is, it is success over total. And that gives us the probability, experimental probability for us, right? I hope this experiment helps you to understand the very basic concept and also enlightens with the differences between normal probability that is theoretical probability approach and the practical or experimental probability approach. I'm Anil Kumar and I hope this helps you to understand the very basic concept. You can always subscribe and share my videos. Thank you and all the best.